Emily, who had just moved to a new city, being single and wanting to meet new people, decided to use Tinder to meet someone. At first, Emily thought the app was just like any other dating app she had ever used before. She swiped right on a few profiles and matched with a few guys. However, things quickly took a turn for the worse. One night, Emily was scrolling through her matches when she came across a profile that caught her eye. The profile picture was of a handsome man with piercing blue eyes and a charming smile. His name was Adam, and he seemed like the perfect match for Emily. Excited to start a conversation with Adam, Emily sent him a message. However, she never received a response. She assumed that he was just not interested, so she moved on. She was disappointed, but she thought it just wasn't meant to be. One day, Emily received a new notification from Tinder saying that she had a new match. She opened the app to find that it was Adam, the guy she had tried to match with previously. Excited to finally have a chance to talk to him, she sent him a message. She received a response almost immediately. This gave Emily a lot of relief. Adam asked her if she could switch to Telegram. Emily did not think that was an issue, so she downloaded Telegram and found Adam. They started chatting. As they were messaging each other back and forth, Adam was charming and funny, and Emily felt like she had finally found someone who truly understood her. They chatted for hours every day, and Emily found herself becoming more and more attracted to him. However, things started to get strange. Emily noticed that Adam would never send her pictures of himself and whenever she asked to video chat, he always had an excuse. She even tried to search for him in other social media sites, but she couldn't find any account linked to his name. One day, Emily received a message from Adam that sent shivers down her spine. He told her that he had been watching her, that he knew everything about her, and that she was his. Emily was terrified and immediately unmatched him on Tinder. However, that was just the beginning of her nightmare. Emily started receiving strange phone calls from unknown numbers, and when she answered, all she could hear was heavy breathing on the other end. She started to notice that she was being followed by somebody whenever she went out. When she went out, she couldn't shake the feeling that someone is out there watching her every move. Emily tried to ignore the paranoia, but things only got worse. One night, she woke up to find her front door was open even though she was certain she had locked it before going to bed. She also noticed that her phone was missing. She got on her MacBook to log into her various sites and all over her social media accounts. She saw that she had been hacked, somebody spreading false messages about her. The messages were making her out to be some sort of slut. She contacted the police, but they couldn't do anything without solid proof. Terrified for her safety, Emily decided to put a request to relocate for her job to a different city and just start over. As she settled into her new apartment in a new city, she still couldn't shake the feeling that someone was still out there watching her every move. Years went by, and Emily had almost forgotten about the traumatic experience she had on Tinder. That was until one day, when she received a notification from Tinder. Her phone had reinstalled it without her knowledge and reinstated her profile. She slowly opened the app to look at the match. It was a profile picture of a man with piercing blue eyes and a charming smile. Emily felt like she was going to be sick. She immediately deleted the app and threw her phone across the room. She knew that she could never trust anyone on Tinder again. If someone wants to immediately go to another app, there could be a nefarious reason. Maybe they don't want anyone to see what they are about to do. It started like any other night. I was scrolling through Tinder, swiping left on the ones that didn't catch my eye, and swiping right on the ones that did. It was my usual routine, and I didn't expect anything out of the ordinary to happen. It was just fun. But then, I matched with him. His name was James, and he was attractive in a rough, rugged way. His profile was sparse, 
with just a few photos and the one line bio that read, I'm just here for a good time. I messaged him and we hit it off right away. We talked for hours about everything and nothing at all. He was funny, charming, and seemed to genuinely care about what I had to say. I was over the moon for this guy in a very short amount of time, and I couldn't wait to meet him in person. We made plans to meet up at a local bar the following weekend, and I spent the days leading up to our date in a state of anxious excitement. When the night finally arrived, I dressed up in my most attractive outfit I could find and headed out to meet him. I arrived at the bar early and nervously waited for him to arrive, but he never did. I waited for hours, but he never showed up. I messaged him, but he never replied. I was heartbroken and confused. I couldn't understand why he could just ghost me like that after we had hit it off so well. But then, a few days later, I received a message from him. It was short and to the point. Sorry I didn't show up, it read. I had a family emergency. I was skeptical, but I was also still interested in meeting with him, so I let it slide. We started talking again, and everything seemed to be back to normal. But then, things started to get weird. He would send me strange messages in the middle of the night, saying things like, I can't stop thinking about you, and you're the only one who understands me. I started to feel uneasy, like he was becoming too obsessed with me too quickly. I decided to distance myself with him, but he always found a way to draw me back in. And then one day, I received a message from him that chilled me to the bone. I know where you live, it read. I was terrified. I had never given him my address, so how could he possibly know where I lived? I tried to block him on Tinder, but he kept creating new accounts and messaging me from them. I started to feel like I was being stalked, like he was always watching me. I became paranoid and started locking all the doors and windows in my apartment at night. I was afraid to leave the house, afraid that he would be waiting for me somewhere outside. And then, one night, I heard a knock at my door. I peeked through the peephole and saw him standing there, looking at me with a smile that gave me the chills. I called the police and they found him standing on the porch when they arrived. He was arrested for stalking and harassment. It turns out that he had hacked my phone and was able to track my every move for weeks. I was right to be cautious and to not leave my house. He was waiting for the right time to find me caught off guard and kidnap me. What was he going to do with me is anyone's guess, but it was not going to be any good. I was lucky to have escaped without physical harm, but I was scarred for life. I had thought that Tinder was just a harmless dating app, but I had never been more wrong. Now, whenever I see someone swiping through Tinder, I can't help but wonder if they too have had a brush with danger. If they too have encountered someone like James, lurking in the shadows, waiting to pounce. It was a hot summer night, and I had just moved to a new city. I was eager to make new friends, and maybe even find a romantic partner, so I decided to download Tinder. At first, everything seemed to be normal. I swiped left and right, chatted with a few people, and even went on a date with a guy who seemed nice. There did not seem to be any problems, just some fun dating experiences. But then, something strange started happening. I would get matches with people who had no pictures, no bios, and no information at all. They would message me with strange phrases that made no sense like, I have the key to the kingdom, or the world is a lie. At first, I thought it was just a glitch in the app, but then the messages started getting more disturbing. They would mention details about my life that I had never shared on the app, like the fact that I had just moved to a city, or that I had a dog named Max. I started getting paranoid, wondering if someone was stalking me and using Tinder to reach me. One night, I got a message from a match that had no profile picture. The message simply read, I know where you are right now. You better not leave. I freaked out and immediately deleted the app from my phone, but it was too late. The next day, I received a package in the mail. Inside was a note that said, I warned you not to leave. 
you belong to me now. There was also a lock of hair that I recognized as my own in the package. I started shaking with fear and called the police. How did this person get a piece of my hair? The police came and took a report, but there wasn't much that they could do. I had no proof that the messages or the packages were connected to a person on Tinder, and there was no way to track down the person who sent them. I felt helpless and alone. I got rid of my old phone and got a new one. I did not transfer any information to the new phone at all. I just wanted a fresh start in case someone was able to access my phone without my knowledge. Weeks went by, and I tried to put the whole experience behind me. I moved to a new apartment and even started dating someone from work. But then, one day, I had received a message from a familiar username on the new dating app that I had downloaded. It was the same person from Tinder. The messages were even more sinister this time. They said they were watching me, that they had proof. They even sent me pictures of me walking my dog or sitting at a coffee shop when I was alone. This was a total violation of my personal space. I was terrified. I couldn't understand how this person could know so much about me. I started to wonder if they were hacking my phone or social media accounts. I felt like I was losing my mind. Then, one night, I got a call from an unknown number. I answered, and a deep, chilling voice said, I'm coming for you tonight. You can't hide from me any longer. I hung up and called the police again, but once again there was nothing they could do. How could you just leave me exposed with no protection? This is madness. I started sleeping with a knife under my pillow, and I would check my windows and doors every night before going to bed. I felt like a prisoner in my own home. But then, something strange happened. The messages stopped. The call stopped. The packages stopped. I started to feel like maybe it was all in my head, that I had imagined the whole thing. Until one day, I was walking my dog in the park. I heard footsteps behind me, and when I turned around, I saw a figure in a hooded sweatshirt. They were walking towards me, slowly and deliberately. I panicked and ran home as fast as I could. When I got home, I immediately checked my phone. There was a message from the same Tinder account. I told you I would find you. You can't escape me. I knew then that this was real, and someone was actually following me and using dating apps to get close to me. I left my apartment immediately and moved back in with my parents. I knew my dad would protect me from whatever was going on. One night at my parents' house, my dog Max was looking at the window and barking. I looked to see what was going on outside, but before I could look through the window, someone threw a brick through the window, sending glass everywhere. I screamed for my dad, and he grabbed a bat. He ran outside and saw a hooded man. He hit the hooded man in the face and the stomach with the bat. After realizing he had incapacitated the hooded figure, he yelled at my mom to call the police. The hooded figure was a lonely man named Lester. The neighborhood called him Lester the Molester because he was always being creepy, saying the weirdest things to females. Not that he had actually done anything that somebody knew about for sure, it was just a thought. Lester had found out how to access people's phones and control their permissions from his little computer layer. He was able to see everything and with that, know everything. He had finally been stopped, thanks to my dad. I love you, dad. Thank you for always taking care of me. One night, Emily was scrolling through her matches when she came across a... As they were messaging, the messages were making her out. She still couldn't shake the feeling that some... some I was eager to make new friends and maybe even find a room. I was eager. Uh.